Hi, in this video I'm introducing the shell method of computing the volume of a solid or revolution. This video has two parts. The first is an explanation and visualization of the shell method. I'll do the visualization two different ways. In the second part, I'll go through an example where you don't have fancy computer graphics to help you. Let's get started. If you're here, you probably already went through the disk method, also called the washer method. The disk method slices the solid into thin disks. Each disk is a short cylinder of tiny little height of either dx or dy. The volume of each disk is base area times height, where the base area is the area of a circle or, or the difference of two circles. Then you add all the disks together by taking an integral. The shell method doesn't slice the solid, but instead carves it into concentric circular shells. Imagine that you want to take the volume of a cylindrical tube. Something like this. You can carve concentric circles out of it. Each is a shell. The total volume of the whole tube is the sum of all the volumes of the shells. So here in red is the original region on the plane. And then you take that region and you rotate it around an axis like this one. Then in space, that red region is going to sweep around in space and it will form a tube like this with the axis. And then you carved out concentric circles. Notice that the circles or these shells are parallel to the axis of the rotation. The axis of rotation was here and these are the shells. Then the, you compute the tiny volume dv of one typical shell. So let's say I take out one shell, this one. I want the volume of this tiny little shell, right? Well, if I flatten it out, I get a rectangle with a tiny little thickness. That thickness is going to be either dx or dy. The volume of this shell with this tiny thickness is base area times height, where the height is a tiny dx or dy. Let's take a look at this shell again when it was a shell. And then I open it, becomes a rectangle with the tiny thickness. Well, the rectangle has a height. This height was part of the original region. So it was the height of the original region. The width of the rectangle, the width of the rectangle was this whole circle. The width of the rectangle was the circumference of the shell. So the volume here is the height, which came from the original region in red, times the circumference of the shell, which means you need to know the radius of it because circumference is 2 pi r times the radius. So you need to know the distance from this point to the axis of rotation times the tiny little thickness dx or dy. Let's go to a graph. Here's the original region in the xy plane. Here's the axis of rotation. I rotate. And I carve out the shells. Note how the shells are parallel to the axis of rotation. What happens? The height of the shell is this distance. The thickness is this dy. The radius is this distance. And the circumference is 2 pi times the radius. And then dv is equal to height times circumference times dy. Total v is the integral of dv from this point, the starting point, to this point, the ending point. 
Let's do it again with actual equations. Use the shell method to compute the volume of the solid revolution obtained by rotating the area between fx equals 4 minus x minus 3 squared and gx equals 0 about the y-axis. Let's go on Desmos to draw the graphs. Here's fx equals 4 minus x minus 3 squared. It's an upside-down parabola. Here's gx equals 0. It's the same as the x-axis. Here's the region between them. The intersections are here and here. This point is 1, 0. This point is 5, 0. Now let me switch to GeoGebra so I can illustrate in three dimensions. This GeoGebra page was created by Leslie Glenn and Lenore Horner. I'll put the link in the description section. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, and here's the region with the parabola on top and the x-axis in the bottom. Now I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis. You can see that the region sweeps out a volume that looks like a bunt cake. You see that stick that's labeled capital A? It sweeps out a shell that has a tiny thickness. Let me do it again. Try to follow both the region and the stick. Let me open the solid a little bit so you can see the inside. Let me show you what happens when we move just the stick. It sweeps out a circular sheet with a tiny thickness. That's one shell. I think it's easier to visualize if I open it a little bit. Imagine having all of these shells together. They all have different sizes, but together they cover the entire volume. Let's take one typical shell. It's at this position x. The height of the shell is this height, the difference between fx and gx. The length of the shell is the circumference. The thickness of the shell is a tiny dx. If you flatten out that shell, you get a rectangular box with a height of fx minus g of x, length of circumference, and thickness of dx. Therefore, the tiny volume is dv equals height times circumference times dx. Height is fx minus gx. Circumference. Circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. What is the radius? Let me open the shell out some more so you can see. The center of the circle is here at 0. The circle is located here at x. Therefore, the radius is x minus 0 equals x. The tiny volume is dv equals fx minus gx times 2 pi x times dx. The total volume is the integral of dv from the first shell all the way in here, x equals 1, to the last shell out here at x equals 5. All right, let's bring up the original question again. We have the volume is integral from 1 to 5 of fx minus gx dash parabola minus the x-axis times 2 pi x times dx. Plug in the equation of the parabola. The x-axis is just 0. Factor out the 2 pi and multiply out the square. Simplify and multiply the x. And integrate. I get all of that from 1 to 5, put into my calculator and get 32 times 2 pi. The answer is 64 pi. All right, so that's the end of part 1. In part 2, I'll do a harder integral without the help of any computer graphics or GeoGebra or Desmos. Any questions so far or comments, put it in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. 
Thanks for watching. Watch out for part two. Bye.